The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at a few things, starting out with Bitcoin. But before we do that, I want to tell a little story that I got from Martin Armstrong uh, over the weekend. It was a very interesting story. The, uh, there was two people getting on an airplane, getting ready to go to New York. And one was an atheist, and another one was a little girl, eight years old. And she was sitting there reading her Bible. And the atheist looked at her and looked and sort of smirk, smirked, and he said, you know, young lady, sometimes when we fly on these planes, we like to talk to our fellow passengers to make the time go faster. And the little girl puts down her Bible and she says, yes, she says, that would be fun. He said, what would you like to talk about? He says, well, why don't we talk about the fact that there is no God and there is no life after death and there is no heaven and hell. How would that be? And the little girl says, you know. That's interesting. Can you answer me this question first? He said, sure. What is it? She says, if deers, cows, and, and horses all eat the same thing, grass, why is it that when a deer poops, it comes out in pellets, and when a cow poops, it comes out in patties, and when a horse poops, it comes out in clumps? And the atheist thought for a minute. He says, well, he said, I can't really say. And she says, you're trying to tell me we're going to have an interesting conversation when you don't even know what poop is? Well, boys and girls, that's pretty much what's going on in the markets these days. Let me give you a perfect example. Wasn't it nice of the people from the Russian military to tell everybody that the nuclear option had been implemented and they were ready to go? Oh, wow. Isn't that surprising that they would do that? Oh, my goodness, how nice. I wonder if they also telegraphed what they were going to have for breakfast for the next two weeks. People that believe this stuff, folks, I swear to God, I just don't understand it. Now, people have asked me over the weekend with all the stuff that's going on, the fact that we go down 140 handles in the S&P and now we're back. Uh, almost at the highs where we were on Friday, within about 20 points away. I mean, give me a break. This market's telling you that they've made some kind of agreement already. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. I don't know. I mean, that's the way it looks like to me. I mean, if you ever used the word nuclear before in any of these markets, it'd be limited down faster than you could shake a stick, and that's not happening. So there must be some agreement being made. That's just my two cents worth. All I know is when they're going to use a nuclear uh, option, they're certainly not going to tell anybody, are they? No. And this thing about the sanctions, they don't work. They never have. And they already plan for these things when they do these things. So none of that stuff really, really means very much uh, from my perspective. Now, people have asked me, have I ever seen anything like this before? Of course, I have a lot of different ones. The one the most dramatic that came to my mind was in 1972, trading at Conti Commodities. We had just had a big grain report. And it was very, very bearish. And Ivan Auer, who was the guy who ran the squawk box for Conti Commodity, was on the line. And he said, well, he said, it looks like we're going to be uh, limit down in just about most of the options. Uh, some of the far out ones that are trading at a big discount, or maybe we'll be trading, he said, but the rest of them will be pretty much limit down. And about 20 minutes before, he says, a little buying showing up in the far end. But the near end is going to be their lock limit. They're not going to be trading for a couple of days. And about 10 minutes before, well, there's a lot of people in the pit, and there's a lot of, you know, a lot of seem to, a lot of people look like they're doing, doing some action. He said, I don't know what it is. Three minutes before to go, he comes on, and he's quivering in his voice. They're going to open limit up. They're going to open limit up. And they didn't trade for three days. And that was known, folks as the Russian grain robbery. It was out of the bag by then, and away they went. They went up, I believe, I'm doing this from memory, and you're going back 50-some years. I believe they were up three days in a row, and these were limits for 15 cents. They weren't at the 30 and 45 limits that we have now. These were 15-cent limits, which was uh, still quite a bit, because beans were trading for 4 or $5. That was a perfect example where the continuity of thought in the markets had changed. In other words, people were thinking one way and had to be the other. That's pretty much what we might be looking at here 
in the uh, in the stock market. If you remember yesterday, I, or excuse me, on Friday, I spent a great deal of time talking about the importance of what was happening with the S&P coming into the close. And I want to bring this up to you to, to see it. I've updated it today just to show you where we were. There was that exponential, 13-day exponential moving average. I said we had to close above that. Uh, the number, the 382 number came in at 4371. Uh, I believe we closed at 4375 or 4380, right on the line. And then last night, of course, we were down 150 handles, and we're right back up there again, folks. That, that, is, that is not bearish action. It's taking all the bearish news that you can possibly get that's in the news all the time, and uh, you know that's the main thing that you're that you're watching. I mean, it's just uh, there. Well, you just have to be careful when you. And maybe this will turn around and go down. I don't know. All I can tell you is the market's acting pretty nicely, given the fact that you know we got a nuclear holocaust going on and all the other bad things that are supposed to be going on in the world. And yet, that is not what the market is telling us what it's doing. So, it's going to all change by the end of the day. But right now, it's saying, hey, there's something not right out here. And so we need to pay uh, close attention to that. That's for absolute sure. Now, there's a, the, one, the one market that has really surprised me. Well, I mean, <laughs> it surprised a lot of people. But take a look at the bond market, folks. We, let me get this up here so you can take a look at it here. Now, they're switching over now to the uh, June bonds. But you'll notice here that we, we gapped up five handles from 152 up to 157. The 382 number came in at 156.28, and the high in those bonds last night was 156.28. That's exactly where they went to. They backed off about two points from there. They're still up in that ballpark, but uh, th these markets, are, they're, they're very, very volatile, so pay very, very close attention to them because if you don't use stops from these markets, you know, that's pretty much what you want to be looking at. Yeah, yeah. The uh, <laughs> there, someone posted the thing from Mar Martin Armstrong about the atheists and the little girl, but I, I thought you'd get a, a kick out of that. Anyway, uh, he used the word scheisers. Of course, the word scheisers in German is the word for poop. So uh, that's, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Okay, let's get back here. The scenario that we're probably looking for for a crash based on that 1982 and excuse me, 1987 and 1929 scenarios, it could still happen. But all we have to do is just close above that number in the S&P. And we're not very far away from it. We're trading it. Uh, last I saw it was about 62 or something like that. And it just needs to go a little bit higher. And you'll be able to see that it's uh, getting ready to uh, getting ready to possibly roll over. There are other markets that are not acting very, very uh, nicely as far as being bullish and stuff. Look at the crude oil, folks. You would think crude oil would be going through the moon and also gold going through the moon. Yeah, they're up a little bit. I don't even know. Yeah, crude oil's still up a little bit. But, you know, well, no, actually, crude oil's reversed and gone down now. So we're, uh, you know, well, not down a lot, but, you know, down quite a bit from where it was last night up at, up at that 99 level. Same thing with the with the gold. So I'm just bringing these to your attention because I follow the patterns, and when the patterns are not telling me what the 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 the, the story that they're trying to tell you in the market, there's something not right, and that's all I'm trying to alert you to the fact that these these deals might already be done. I their markets certainly act like it, and those dudes out there are a whole lot smarter than we are. Well. For me, anyway, 877-927-6648. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted the chart of the uh, Russian stock market, the RSX. It's called the Vanek uh, Russia ETF. Uh, they've closed the market in uh, Russia today, folks. I mean, they were expecting a little bit of a down move. They were down 33% on Friday, and you can see we're ready to break the trend line going back to 2009, uh, if it, in fact, is a valid trend line. So... Uh, also, the Russian ruble is up about 50% in two days uh, against the U.S. dollar. Uh, dropped it, sorry, let's say, say that again. It dropped against the U.S. dollar 50%. So a lot of that is already being factored in. And believe me, these military guys, they factor in that kind of stuff uh, when they're getting ready to do these operations. That's uh, my guess because they have to sort of answer with people at home, even though when you have a situation like you have in Russia, not necessarily so. But I wanted to bring to your attention here something that is important that we talked about several times last week, and I wanted to bring it to your attention again, and that is the news and how it operates. Look at here, folks. This was much, much worse than what we have going on in the Ukraine right now. We lost uh, 2,600 U.S. citizens, or mostly U.S. citizens, on 9-11. You notice on uh, 9-11, uh, when it occurred, you'll you'll see that was 9/11. Uh, we rallied. We opened sharply lower. Uh, this is a weekly chart. We were, we were closed for five days before that. We gapped down sharply right to the 1.618 level. Then we rallied up to the 61% retracement, and then went down for 10 months, finally making our low in October of the next year. Uh, so. All I'm doing is showing you these patterns and how they react to some of this stuff. The news just doesn't always – it anticipates what's already happened. And that's, that's one of the things that you've got to try to remember when you're at least trying to look at some of this stuff. That, that's all I'm trying to do. It's all related to you know, keeping your uh, powder dry and making sure you don't risk very much. It's not the amount of money that you lose. It's about, not the, let's go say it again. It's not about the money you don't make. It's the amount of money that you don't lose, and that's the whole key. Remember Buffett's two rules. Number one rule is don't lose money. Number two, don't break number one rule. And that's really what you're when you're looking at here. Now, I've been asked to talk about gold a little bit. I'm very, very bullish gold, uh, not on the short term. The short term, we made a major high up there at that 1974 level. We pointed that out 
half a dozen times, but I want to go down memory lane here just a little bit and go into where I was back in August of 1976. If you'll see the low in gold at that time, we were trading just about $100 an ounce when I went to work at Drexel that week in the first week of August of 1976. They gave me 40 accounts to trade, 40 commodity accounts. They would been dormant. They all had money in them or ready to trade. And so, yeah, here comes the new kid on the block. And so they throw me some money and say, okay, my clients here at Drexel is what my boss told me. He said uh, they're accustomed to losing money and they're accustomed to making money. The one thing they're not accustomed to doing is losing all their money. He said if you lose more than 25%, you're going to be put on a uh, leave of absence until you figure out what you did wrong. So keep that 25% thing in mind. And, of course, I started buying it at about $1.05, and I just kept buying and buying and buying. And so the question that was posed to me, where do I think we are compared to where we are back then? And I believe where we are now is where we were in March of 78. Uh, we made a double top up there with gold at around $200 an ounce. And then we had a tremendous break, believe it or not, tremendous break of $25 an ounce. Now, remember, yeah, the margin on this stuff was about uh, 1000 bucks at that time, you know, so eventually it went to 860 But then, you know, it started to rise. And then when we got up to $250 an ounce, we had a big correction to $50 an ounce, okay? And I, I was watching the FIB numbers on these things. The low from 78 into to, to, uh, December of 78 was exactly 61%. I mean, not to be a rocket science to figure that. And it was the old high at 200 So I started piling on gold. And then I bought some more in the first ABCD, which was out in about March. And my goal was to sell it in early January of 2000, excuse me, of 1980. And the reason for that is if I sold it in January, my goal was right around $700 an ounce is what I was looking for measuring ABCDs. I wouldn't have any tax liability on that until 1982 because I had 18 months to work with it. So that's exactly what I did. The moral of this story is this. I had two of my best customers that I got out of them around 680, I believe, in the gold. And gold went up into the January 20th for three weeks. It went straight up to 860, where it was limited up that day on January the 20th of 1980. And they never spoke to me again because they missed that last $200. I was so shocked. I you know, made all the necessary apologies and stuff. Didn't make any difference. They didn't want to lose that last $200. Unfortunately, they moved their accounts over to Dean Witter, and I know that they wrote those down all the way, I mean all the way, way below $400 an ounce. And not that I have any, you know, I, I, I washed my hands of it. There's nothing else I could, uh, I could do about it. But that's, that's, what you're, that's what you're dealing with when you're watching here. I missed this last part of this run-up in gold. You know, I got out of the long gold. We were very, very, we'd done very well in gold this last year. It was a fabulous year. And we got out of the longs around 1865, and I missed that last $100. But I'm going to get it back, and I'm just waiting for the time to buy it. So my, my game plan is I want to see how the market handles all this stuff that's going on. And believe me, folks, we're having extremely things that are usually incredibly bullish to gold and also to crude oil, and they're not acting right. That in itself tells you that there's something not going on that, that should be correct. You know what I mean? There's something not right. That's the, that's the bottom line. You know, that's uh, really what we're looking at. So keep in mind that uh, that's the things that we're paying attention to. So hold on one second here. I want to do something here. I got to I got to do something. Where is it? Hold on just a second, boys and girls. going to take me a minute here, and we're going to see. Uh, hold on. Got to do something here. Uh-oh. There we go. All right. There we go. Uh, we've gotten the stock market starting to pick up again pretty good. So that's uh, what the market's doing is telling you that this deal is already done, folks. I think uh, maybe maybe Putin has surrendered and gone back to Moscow. Who knows? That's that's exactly what it could be, I suppose. But we're going to be watching it as we go through watching some of these things here uh, here early this morning, and we'll we'll see what's going on with some of these other things. Um, okay, now I want to cover one other thing in one of these charts, and then we've got a break coming up, and I've got to cover a few things. Here's another one here on the news situation, folks. Today. 
if you listen to what's happening, I know in the natural gas that we have here in our country is the same natural gas that they have in Europe. The difference is theirs is in Europe and ours is here. We have a surplus of natural gas here, folks. You can see the head and shoulders pattern. So when you watch the news this morning on Bloomberg or Sunday night, whenever you wanted Bloomberg, CNN, they were always telling you how crazy it is in, in the natural gas in Europe. And it is. The natural gas in Europe is selling for three and four times what our natural gas is selling for here. And the other thing that the people don't realize is that the people in, in Europe, especially Germany and uh, some of the Baltic countries, they're really dependent upon Russia for natural gas. And if he turns it off, they're going to freeze. So let's pay attention to that too. 877-927-6648. We'll be back and talk more about natural gas. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I'm getting back to this natural gas uh, contract because it's such a perfect head and shoulders pattern. I mean, here we have, you know, it's a winter time over in Europe and we're giving them gas. And yet the demand for our gas here is dropping. It's not going up. And that is a perfect head and shoulders, folks. Left shoulder, right shoulder equal time and price. It's exactly what you have to have in order to fulfill that formula from Andrew Lowe's book, The Non-Random Walk Down Wall Street. Now, that leads me to the question that Jeff and uh, Philly uh, asked me this morning is, is when you have a big gap, 
in a in a Gartley pattern that is completing, what do I do? Boy, I'll tell you what I what I do is I stand I stand aside. There's two danger signals when we trade patterns, folks. The two danger signals are a gap, which you don't see gaps too often, but you do see them. Gaps is one, and the second thing are really wide ranging bars. And boy. If you want to see a wide-ranging bar, boys and girls, I'm going to show you one. And this is the one that was so doggone scary. And that's the one that we had on Thursday and then again on Friday in the S&P. And you can see we're back up to that 4371 again. We're getting ready to go through that uh, exponential moving average. And that's going to violate this, you know, the situation that uh, we had, thinking that it was going to roll over and possibly call a a big down move. Maybe the down move will come, but it, you know, so far it's not happening today. And with all the bad news, if it is in fact bad news, and I'm beginning to think that it isn't, that uh, that that really doesn't make any difference. So it's about the money that you don't lose, folks. That's the whole key. Keep that in mind. Now, also one of the things I was watching last night, given the fact I want to go into the grains here just a little bit because uh, this is an important important fact here to look at because this is what I wanted to show. Uh, this was the uh, 382 retracement in the grains. We had a high at 1760. We broke uh, roughly two dollars a bushel. And last night we gapped up and we hit the exact 382 retracement on that, folks, at 1647. And believe me, you had a thousand dollars in it before you even got your fill back. That's how quickly uh, the market dropped. And of course, it's bounced around. We've rallied back a little bit from that level, but it hit it spot on and is still trading substantially below it. So these are the ones. Now, when I see a gap like this and it gaps exactly at my price, then I have something to hang my hat on. And the reason for that is, Jeff, if it's at the exact price where I want to act and it's at the opening, as, as it was here in the beans last night, I have the opening price in my favor, plus I have the gap. So I have two things that allow me to control the risk, the 382 and then also the opening price. And boom. Therein gives me the reasoning why I can take that trade because I can control my risk there. Now, if the market would open substantially below that 382 and then ran up to it, I have to change my strategy for two reasons. One, I'm way above the opening price, okay, and that takes one of the factors out. And the second reason is I don't know if the 382 is going to stop or not. So that's the that's the reasoning behind it. It's all related. And, you know, you could close your eyes, do the 382, put your stop in and you're going to be right about two out of three times without any trouble at all. But and still you still have to you know make that decision of whether you want to take that trade or not, you know, based on what that pattern is really trying to tell you. So I hope that you know, gives you uh, some uh, ideas of uh, what we're looking at in here. OK, I had a couple other things that I wanted to cover here. With the, uh, with the futures markets. Let me get this one up here. Uh, and that is the, I uh, wanted to get the palladium up. That You want to see something that is, now palladium is used in electronics, of course, of course folks, but look at the high that we made in the palladium uh, on Thursday. It was exact 78% level, okay, to the exact 78% level. And look what happened. We went from 2,700 all the way down to 2400 in one day. That's a $300 drop in palladium. But that, that's a big contract, folks. This is 20, uh, costs a lot of money to trade this puppy because these things are worth, uh, each 100 points is worth uh, thousands of dollars. So it hit the 61% retracement. You see there in February, on February the 1st, right on the money. And then we had the one hit on Thursday, right there. So that there, something else is telling you, if this is a wartime thing, then why is it selling off? And that in therein lies the rub from looking at it from a technical perspective uh, as we look at it for today. If you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. And if we can try to get any people to call in for any questions, I'll be more than happy to uh, answer them. Uh, someone's asked a question about the 1929 crash, uh, excuse me, the 87 crash. I'll bring that up again. This scenario that we're looking at is not working the way that it was supposed to do. We were supposed to have a real sharp down day on Friday, and we did not get that. It started on Thursday, and Friday, you know, was just continuing up. That broke the sequence of what we were supposed to be looking for. And that's why. You know, when you had that news coming out of, you know, war and everything, and they're showing every, you know, every, every single 
every single TV station, folks, every single KB, cable outlet, Fox, CNN, MSNBC, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, BBC all had the same pictures of the war, the same pictures of the tank running over the little car, or the car with the man in it. And if you ever, if you saw that, do you know that that man got out of there? His neighbors pulled him away after the, the tank pulled away. They pulled him out of that car and cut him out of it. He had a few scratches on him, but he had no broken bones, and he was didn't even have to be hospitalized, if you can believe that. I mean, it looked like he was crushed to death, but in fact, he, he actually was, and I actually walked him, watched him walk away from the car. So it was really uh, quite amazing. Watching this stuff, and I do get involved with watching the news because I want to see how the market handles it, and I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's heart-wrenching to see what is going on and uh, it, it, it's but you just got to wonder, you know, what's true and what is it? Boy, and I'll tell you any more, you know, you got to put a little tongue in cheek, say, hmm, I wonder what they really mean by that. So another reason why you've got to be uh, very careful. Let's get back here uh, to the uh, to this gold market. And I've got to get where is it here? I think it's right here. I hope it is anyway. Where is the gold? Well, my goodness, I've lost my gold chart. That was my big one. I had to had a special thing on gold that I want to cover. Oh, here, it's got to be right here. Hold on, here is where we got to be it. There we go. Okay, here is the gold that we're looking at. I wanted to give you the reasoning behind this. Okay, hold on, yes, this. Oh, Bitcoin, I think, is just making a 382 retracement, Bob, up there around 40,000, 42,000, whatever it is. I don't think it's going to get much higher than that, and then we'll start down. Uh, this is the gold. This is the weekly chart. You'll notice the 78% level is there at 1977. The high was 1976. We backed off a little more than $120. Uh, I think we're trading. I, I thought it would. I think we might get down to 1838 on this move, but I really believe this is the beginning uh, of something really big happening in gold, folks. Uh, the $64 question is is what's going to happen here in this next 10 days. Because if all we can back off is about $200 in the gold, uh, this old cowboy is going to put the old burrow together, get my old uh, saddlebags up and fill them up with water and beef jerky and go out there and do some gold mining because I'm going to be getting back into the gold market. Uh, I'm, I'm actually never out of it because I have physical gold. But uh, I love silver. I, I've always said ever since I started on this show 15 years ago, buy silver rounds anytime. They're around $14. They've been down there maybe three times over the past 12, 15 years, and I still believe those will go to $50 or even more once this inflation sets in because the Fed is between the proverbial rock and a hard place. 877-927-6648. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. I wanted to bring up to your attention here the uh, chart on the euro. Uh, let me get this up here. This is a really surprise. I think I put it up here already. Let's get it up here again. Hold on here. The, the uh, trading gods are calling me to see what's beeping here. And let's see where it is here. Uh, yeah, okay, there's where we are. All right, uh, let's move on here to a couple little things here that may or may not mean anything. I've got to look at something closely here, folks. And I want to get this up here to see where we are here. Okay, that's a big 10-4. Let me look here and make sure we got some of these things moving around a little bit. And uh, we'll move on from that level here. Okay, hold on just a second. I got to double check something, folks. Otherwise, okay. All right, that's a good thing. All right, let's move on here to something else I want to cover here. Uh, very important. This euro, folks, uh, this is indicative of what's happening with these currencies. They're just not doing very much. They're up and down in a trading range here since December between 115 and 110. I mean, that's a $5,000 range, but that's nothing for the euro once it starts moving. And so I'm watching that along, along with the gold and all the other things that are going on. So Hold on a second, folks. My beepers are going off like crazy, so I need to be able to say that I can see what is going on here so that I know what is going on here because sometimes what they tell you is not what you're doing. Okay, we made as high as I'm um, checking here. We matched the high last night at uh, 43.85 in the S&P. Uh, and if you would have told anybody last night after being down 140 handles it was going to go up there and match that high, you would say, given that news of nuclear holocaust and, uh, you know, whatever, you know, who knows? We'll, we'll see uh, what's going on. That's, uh, that's, that's my two cents worth, folks. When I'm giving you this, that's basically it. I particularly like the way that Martin Armstrong framed that thing between the atheist and little girl because sometimes you think you know something and, in fact, it really doesn't. Uh, okay, someone says, uh, do you and your best contacts have a guess where Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano are headed? Uh, I, I, John thinks that they're going to go, John Jameson, who I rely on in this, thinks they are going to go lower. He's looking for maybe 25,000 in Bitcoin, maybe, uh, you know, uh, 1,500 in Ethereum and Cardano, maybe down around 50 cents. But those are just his guesses, you know, and remember, that's what they are, his guess. That's what they were last week. I don't think they've changed any because, uh, you know, he's been showing me, you know, pretty much what's been happening with this thing, with what's been going on here uh, in Europe. And, uh, you know, that's the main thing. The big thing last night is when they said that, uh, you know, they had they had uh, instituted the nuclear option. Now, if they're going to institute a nuclear option, they're going to tell everybody, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. That, well, that's what Custer did, you know. He said, here comes my, my reinforcements are coming over the hill. Unfortunately, they were the Indian tribe and not his reinforcements. So that's what you've got to be able to look at. I, I'm not a crypto person. All I do is look at the charts. I don't know anything about those cryptos. I look at the charts, and that's that's really all I did. I've never owned one. I haven't owned one yet, 
and maybe someday in the near future I might, but so far, you know, I haven't uh, I haven't done anything like that, uh, you know, at all. So that's uh, primarily what I'm paying, you know, close attention here uh, to today, just to see how these markets react to the news and these levels that we're really closely following, which you can see what we just did is go up and match the high that we made on Friday in the S&P. So these are just a few of the others. Now, the, the Dow Jones uh, E-mini did not uh, get that high. It only got up to the 78% uh, level, but it's still early. You know, my goodness, it's just a few hours into the trading day. So that's, a, you know, that's not a big deal. So uh, we'll, we'll watch that as we go through uh, looking at some of these other charts. Now, remember, folks, we, we, we've seen these big moves that we're seeing in the grains. Remember, folks, we had a high of, uh, I believe it was a 10, no, 966 in the wheat, and we went all the way down to 866, okay? And, folks, we are, we are, we're already halfway back of that move in the wheat as we're speaking right now. That's where that beeper that just went off that told me that we were, we've made a 50% retracement of that move in the wheat. So these grains are not dead yet. I mean, you know, they, the, 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 what was the story is the uh, reports of their uh, demise has been greatly exaggerated. I think that was uh, Samuel, uh, Samuel, what was his name? What was, <laughs> I can't, oh dear, my, this is my daughter. I mean, she reads all that stuff on the classics and stuff. And I can't, from St. Louis, I, from St. Louis, Missouri, oh, Charles, was it Charles Dickens? Yeah, Charles, yeah, Charles Dickens, wasn't it? Charles Dickens that did the thing? I don't know. I, I forget what it was. Tom Sawyer. <laughs> okay, let's move on here. Folks, I did not stay up last night late. I couldn't do it. I, I, I really planned my day around not having that happen because I was afraid that if I got staying up all night that I was going to be a basket case all day and I didn't want to do that. I get too emotionally watching these war things. I, you know, I was never able to go into the service because of my, I had a hearing, uh, I had a very, well here, I was totally deaf in my left ear. And so I was not able to go into the service, but I certainly done everything I can since the the day I couldn't get in, since I was 18, I've done everything to try to uh, support the uh, servicemen any way that I uh, that I possibly can because it's a it's an it's an honor to do it, and I was not able to do that. Uh, so well, let's move on to a couple other things. I want to ask a question about this 1987 thing. Here, this was the real key here, folks. Let me show you. This was this we were looking at. Remember, the this was October the 16th of 1987. That was a Friday. Okay, the next day it fell apart. That day should have been Thursday, folks. It did not fall apart. The market came back roaring and screaming. It started out badly. I mean, the euro, the 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 uh, Russell had made new lows on the move, and you'll notice here that we didn't do that, and the market came screaming back. That was the first sign that there was something not right in that scenario. Now maybe that scenario will play out in a different way in a couple of days, but the way it was supposed to be played out was not doing the way that it was supposed to be doing. So that was the first sign that you had to be careful. The fact that it opened down 100 handles Sunday night was the first sign, oh, maybe it's going to work. It went down 140 handles and then started to edge its way back up. Are you kidding me, boys and girls? I mean, that's not how bear markets work. I mean, they stay down. <laughs> they really do. They don't. They stay down. They don't give you a chance to get back in over and over again. But that's my that's my two cents worth. So, we'll be watching. This we're just going to have some incredible moves here with these things, folks. On uh, with some of these things. So just stay tuned. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna see some really great things uh, with and these patterns. They work in all these markets. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm moving down to a smaller time frame from my usual half hour. I go down into 15 minutes, and I'm uh, working. Bo's asking a question. Do I know the word handle as it applied to market prices? Uh, all I remember from the uh, – I'll give you – here's my – trade. these are the trading cards that I used. I'll put it up here. You can see this was the seller card, and the other side is a buyer card. I use them as notepads, but on this – the handle here, you can see where it says cars, C-A-R-S. I'm sure you can see that. That meant that meant it was a road car. It was a a, a, a railroad car filled with this stuff. And that the handle on that was whether it was a 75 or a 76. That's how it handled. That's uh, did not post. Uh, shucks. 
I'll hold it up here. Maybe you can see it. I don't know if you can. Oh, you know what? That doesn't work because you can't see my. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll, 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 I'll bring one of these in tomorrow, folks, and you guys can see it. I've got thousands of them that I got when I was still there, but uh, I'll bring in. I'll bring in a trade card. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Okay, folks, take a look at the gold market. Last night, Sunday night, we opened at the 61% retracement of the high from 1974 down to the low at 1886. That was a 61% retracement. We are now, believe it or not, boys and girls, 30 handles, 40 handles under that price. We broke down to 1886 last night. We rallied up to 18, excuse me, 1920 today, which was an exact to the tick 61% retracement of the Sunday night high. Now, that's a big move, folks, but we are we are preparing now to see an ABCD here. We're going to drop another uh, $30 to get down to the uh, level that we're looking at, which is around 1866, uh, 1876. So we're going to be watching that for tomorrow as a potential buy because on a time frame of 15 minutes over the last day and a half, Sunday night and all through Monday, that's going to be a small ABCD there at 1876. So that's going to be pretty good support in the gold. But stop and think. We've got really bullish news. And look at this thing. It's down 40 bucks from the high. This is not how they act, boys and girls. That is not how they act. It's just <laughs> you can't you can't do it any other way. I mean, that's just simple and as simple as can be. The, when these markets don't act when the news is there, there's something wrong. Somebody knows something more than what you know, and the faster you figure that out, the better off you're going to be. Look at crude oil, folks. Crude oil is another example. You know how high did we get last night here? 
if you'll take a look at this, I believe we got as high as $99 an ounce per barrel, and now we're trading a good $5 a barrel under that, making new lows from Sunday night at 94.80. Uh, I mean, this is another market that's just not acting, you know, like it's bullish. So somebody knows something uh, more than uh, what you might think they do. So therein lies the therein lies the rub, as Shakespeare would say. I think it was Shakespeare. Maybe it was somebody else. I don't know. Samuel Clemens, that was the guy's name. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Okay, let's move. Also known as uh, uh, Tom Sawyer. Oh, let's move on. No, uh, Tom Sawyer was the, what was it? it was, I can't remember. Light me up, boys and girls. I'm done. We'll see you tomorrow. May God bless. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless.